Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So I'm not too sure exactly how to intro this video other than the fact that I've been kind of playing around with how I wanted to draw chibis recently. So I have this test of Shu and this test of Ike that I did kind of prior to today's session as I wanted to do a kind of like a full illustration of a bunch of chibis together, which I'm going to be focusing on drawing Alhatham, Kave, Saino, and Tinari from Genshin Impact, but it is going to be from my idol AU version. So I will be drawing them in those outfits, which you can kind of see from these ensemble stars inspired little chibis that I did from a different video. I have this extra Sino reference just because I do want to include his hat as well, but let's go ahead and get on to the actual chibi drawings. So I am going to be working in Clip Studio Paint today just because it is easier for me to work with line work either in Paint Tool Sci or Clip Studio Paint, but today I am just going to be working in Clip Studio Paint just because it's the program that I had open and I was doing all the tests in in terms of the chibi style. So I'm going to work on a rough sketch first in purple to kind of plan out the composition alongside with just poses for all of them. It's been a little bit since I've drawn like a bunch of chibis together, so it might look a little bit weird at first, but hopefully the end result looks at least a little bit more cohesive and a little bit cuter. So after I kind of have the rough sketch done, I went ahead and pulled all my references onto a separate window so I can have that floating on my workspace. Then I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer and we're going to use the froggy pencil as the sketching tool of choice and I'm going to actually do the sketch and try to add as much information that I need before I work on to the line work. But while I'm going to go ahead and work on the line work, I want to show a little bit of some of the examples of previous like chibi styles that I've done or kind of like the evolution of my chibi styles just because I went through like a bajillion phases of drawing chibis because I probably drew them the most, especially when I did a lot of 17 fan art in the very beginning, just because it was very easy to make them very expressive. Also, it's kind of fun to stylize them to represent each of the members in 17 at the time. But at a certain point, I got a little bit stuck in terms of how I was drawing them because I did a very simple style where I would do more cell shading and I wouldn't really explore like painting a lot or experimenting with how I wanted to play around with the rendering or anything like that. So I kind of flip flopped back and forth with the coloring style alongside with like the eye style and like whether or not I wanted to do like painting or line work. So I kind of went back and forth between them, but ultimately I knew that I wanted to do line work for my chibis. And the reason why I've even came to the conclusion that I wanted to revisit doing chibis again, other than the fact that I just miss drawing them because they're always very fun to draw, is the I kind of want to be able to draw them more quickly in a more manageable way. So Whenever I do like more like full render with painting, it takes me a lot longer to color. And then the kind of flip side is that if I end up doing a lot more cell shading, sometimes it might read a little bit too flat in a sense. So I was kind of playing around with what I liked about each of the things that I did in the past for different like chibi styles. And I ultimately decided that I would stick more or less with the cell shaded style just because it is much quicker for myself. But I feel like it's also easier for people in general to read the chibi much more quickly, especially because I have a hard time simplifying forms in a way that's like still represents the character accurately without feeling like I missed too many details. So because I'm going to add pretty much as much detail as I can when I remember to, I don't want the shading to complicate things by adding too much color, making it too dark or anything like that. So I was gonna just kind of balance it out by doing more simple shading and simple kind of lighting for both like, I guess like the skin, the hair, and the clothing for all the chibis anyways. But as we're kind of wrapping up the sketch for all four of the characters, so like I mentioned, I'm drawing them in the idol AU outfits that I've made for them previously in a few other videos, just because I think it's just kind of fun to draw them as a group as aggravate. And I don't really do much like group 
pictures together and chibis are just more manageable this way so it's kind of like an opportunity for me to draw them all at once. So as we move on to the line work, I'm going to go ahead and lower the opacity first of my sketch and then I'm going to kind of reorganize my things into folders. So immediately I put my sketch, my rough sketch into one folder. I make a new folder above that for my line work. And as I'm working on the line work, I kind of separate things into different layers. So I tend to put all of their eyes into one layer, all of their eyebrows into another layer, any skin parts as well onto a separate layer, and then I have hair and clothing on separate layers. So at kind of like minimum, I have five different layers and that's kind of how I like to I guess I color them as well so that's how I kind of separate them so that it makes sense in my brain and I usually don't have too much problems having either overlap or accidentally erasing too many things at once if I need to correct something. But I did run into the problem of drawing on the wrong layer as I usually do which is I drew what you're seeing right now, Sino's clothing and almost the entirety of Sino onto my skin layer which is the most bottom layer in my line art folder and this makes it a little bit harder for me to separate whenever I want to color the lines later to make things look softer because if I have things more or less like appropriately separated I can usually alpha lock those individual line art layers and then color in those lines to be softer for whichever surrounding areas that I need them to be. And I'm usually more concerned about this when it comes to coloring the eyes separately or if I don't want to accidentally color the skin and the hair at the same time. But because Sino's skin and clothing were kind of merged, I do run into the problem of having the kind of like brownish reddish color that I have for his skin outline kind of like merging into the clothing and for all of their outfits they're more or less on the darker side so I didn't want those to be mingling too much but I'm also not going to force myself to make these 100% like pristine either because I didn't really take the time to go into each individual part to color each item, kind of like their outlines to be more appropriately colored. I just softened some areas so that it wasn't too harsh and kind of having that black outline everywhere, just to make it look a little bit more softer if anything. So for the line work as well, I'll make sure to link all the brushes that I've used in the description where it's applicable. So I think in terms of custom brushes, I only use the froggy pencil for sketching and then for the line work, I used a brush called Melty Brush, I believe. And I do think you have to purchase that one with Clippy Points. I don't really remember if it used to be free or if I had spare Clippy Points that I could have used at the time. So yeah, just a little bit of a warning, but you can probably use whatever uh, line art tool that you prefer. I just like this one because it does have a little bit of a texture to it, but it makes lines very kind of like crisp and not too tapered, if that makes sense. I would probably would have gravitated towards something like the G pen, but the way that the G pen sometimes tapers is very abrupt, so I don't really like using it as much. I use the G pen mostly for a little bit of the shading alongside with the, I guess like filling in the flats for the colors. So I'll be using it quite a bit in the coloring stage, and then other than that, I use the soft airbrush from the airbrush section, but I think I only use those four tools for the most part, I think, uh, because I do go a little bit into autopilot mode whenever I do drawing and just use whatever I feel like fits. So hopefully it's just those four brushes that I end up using for the entire piece for today's little drawing. So on the side where you can see all my layers, you're probably seeing that there is right now, or at least there are six, I think, layers, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, there's six layers in that folder and it's most likely because I wanted to separate another part before I end up merging it to become five. So at some part as well, I accidentally merged Sino's eyebrow alongside with the rest of him. So I had to cut that out, erase it, and place it onto a new layer, and then eventually merge it at some later point. But I feel like the layer organization, for the most part, is up to the artist. 
but as I'm kind of like slowly finishing up the line work and sometimes you can see that I'm using a different color to separate some parts so things don't get too confusing when I do line work and have things overlapping. I just do that so when I ever have to draw a new part, it kind of lays on top of the like kind of pre-existing parts a little bit more naturally. So for the eyes, I am going to keep them simple, but right now I'm placing white dots in the center to kind of test out whether or not they're looking in the right direction before I end up coloring them. But the next step that I do is that I select any part of the eye that's underneath the hair alongside with the eyebrows and kind of soften them so that they will appear on top of the hair to a certain degree, but they're faded enough that it appears underneath the hair in a stylistic way. So I tend to do this a lot um, whenever I work with line work. So we kind of breeze over the background. Background, I went kind of simple of this little flash of light behind them. After that, I added a layer of gray for the figures. So how I did that really quickly is to select the outside of my line art. So I have my line art folder set to the reference or the little beacon layer. Select the outside of all my line work. And then I inverted my selection and then filled it in with gray. Then after that, I can go ahead, zoom in and find any areas that need to be, I guess like erased so that later on when I clip my color folder here, which you're going to see, I'm going to set to blue. I'm going to set my line art to red just because it's a little bit easier for me to identify, but I'm going to layer clip this to the gray layer so that any subsequent layer inside the folder is now going to stay within the gray area. And it just makes it a lot easier for me to not worry about my colors bleeding outside to the background and everything's kind of just contained into the gray area. I also think I color eyes very weirdly. Sometimes I color them normally by, you know, you have the outline of your eyes and you fill the inside with a color. But I think because I've drawn chibis the most and I tend to do a very derpy style where it's just one gigantic kind of highlight in the middle of the eye, I've kind of enjoyed blocking in the entirety of the iris as the same color as like the upper and lower lash line. And then after that, I would just make a new layer, make the iris again and leaving a little bit of a border so that the line work is kind of like manually made later. So it's just a little bit easier for me to manage and visualize how the eyes are placed at the time when I do the sketching and the line work portion. You can definitely do this like any other way, but I've kind of adjusted to this way since like quite a while ago. So I kind of adjusted to this and anything inside the iris will be clipped to that new layer rather than the initial line art layer. But you can see that Sino is kind of attached to the skin layer for his entirety of his clothing. So you can see that I'm already went ahead and started to put in a little bit of like a reddish dark brown as kind of like the outline for the skin. And it kind of helps me visualize a little bit of that warmth for the skin tone usually so that I don't make it um, too off colored, if anything. So it just kind of like primes my brain a little bit. and. A lot of the things I feel like I do digitally is kind of like by default and I do things like automatically just because I used to work in such a precise order whenever I did like sketching, line art, color, I would do everything in the same order so that things would work very smoothly and I got to the point where I could, you know, kind of churn out drawings very quickly. But at this point, I feel like I've kind of switched to moving more towards like going with the flow because I tend to make a lot more mistakes recently. So I feel like me being too precious with certain things would probably get me more frustrated, if anything. So for the clothing and the skin. So skin, I tend to do first. I did a little bit of kind of like soft gradients on the face and then after that I would make a new layer set that to multiply and do some kind of like warm shadows for where the hair kind of touches the face any of the kind of like accessories or anything on top of the skin I would also add a shadow after that I added another multiply layer to do the little bit of a mesh color for all of their outfits then we moved on to the hair so for the hair I did 
I kind of like approach this a little bit differently from how I've done chibis in the past. So usually whenever I do more of a cell shaded look for my chibis, I pretty much always do gradient first from base color first, then I would add a darker color to the tips of the hair and the crown of the head. After that, I will make a new layer, set it to multiply, and add some of my shadows to the hair. But the thing I'm doing a little bit differently is the highlights, mostly. <laughs> because when I do cell shading, I tend to simplify them and usually do some kind of like blob or a pattern across the crown of the head. But this time I decided that because I don't want it to look too flat, and I do want the hair to look a little bit more shiny and a little bit more poppy in your face, I am going to go ahead and do something very similar to how I did it with the multiply layer, but instead I'm sending it to screen so that I don't have to worry about the, the gradients in the hair at this point. And I'm kind of doing these more like M's and W's or like these pointy kind of zigzaggy motions for the highlights of the hair. And I'm trying my best to keep in mind a little bit of a light source being stronger on one side versus the other so that the hair doesn't get overwhelmingly filled with entirety of like some kind of zigzaggy texture across the entire crown. I think it's part of kind of like a compromise with myself in terms of how I wanted to do the hair because whenever I do more of a painterly style, I would do a similar texture but I feel like it would appear a little bit too busy. So I definitely think the cell shaded style works a little bit better, but it provides enough details that I feel like it doesn't look too flat or too simple, if that makes sense. So for El Haytham, I also forgot to add the rest of his hair at the back of his skull. So he was looking a little bit flat, but luckily I was able to add that in. And then after that, I went ahead and worked on the clothing, which I'm going to do entirely in time lapse until we do the highlights and the shadows, just because it's mostly just flat color fills for everything, so it's nothing too exciting. So I'm just going to quickly breeze through all of this, and then we'll come back to when we do the highlights and shadows for all of the chibis. So something that I've kind of, I guess like strayed away from initially when I used to do chibis in the past was the fact that I would separate a lot of the clothing into separate layers to color them individually depending on the clothing's color. But nowadays, whenever I work on coloring things all at once, it's easier for me to put them all in one layer and then I will kind of like manage how delicately I deal with the colors. So usually I would separate them into different layers, but now because I do more of a painterly style, I would put them all in the same layer. I am adding a multiply layer, which is similar to what I'm doing right now. Then I would add airbrushing of other colors, then merge those layers, and then individually paint each part separately afterwards. But because I'm doing just cell shading, I set the layer to multiply for the shadows for entirety of the bodies. And then after that, I set another new layer to screen and kind of got a very similar color to what I did for the highlight of their hair to do highlights for the clothing. and. I definitely think this worked a little bit better on Kaveh's outfit and just like how I did the lighting for him versus let's say for Sino or Tinetti just because I don't think I had a like a concrete idea of where the lighting was gonna be so I kind of added it where I think it looked the nicest if anything. 
Oh, last thing. So before we kind of do the last finishing touches, I am going to color the line work, which I mentioned earlier that I tend to like coloring the line work to make things look a little bit softer. So I like to focus this mostly on the face, but there is some areas, let's say for Kaveh's hair, I needed to knock it back to be a bit of a softer brown rather than straight up black, just because it stood out a little bit too much. After that, I went ahead and made a new layer over top the entirety of the coloring and I'm kind of dropping this kind of dustier purple color, which is what I pulled from the background of this current piece. And I'm kind of like sectioning off certain parts of their body that is kind of receding into the space. And I've done this in the past. I think it worked effectively on this piece other than on Tinari's leg. I don't think his leg is pointed back enough for this to look correct. I think it worked out for the most part for Alhatham's leg, uh, Sino's legs, and Tinari's tail, and a little bit of Kaveh's coat, but uh, it kind of helps make the, I don't know, like things have a little bit of atmospheric perspective where as you get further away from the kind of focal point of the piece, it kind of gets a little bit lighter. I also added a gauge and blur layer to make things look a little bit more hazy and softer around certain parts. After that, I'm doing the literally last finishing touches, which are going to be an overlay layer alongside with a little bit of effects. So I decided to do these little sparks of kind of like a light purple alongside with green to represent the electro and the dendro. I tried dropping in a border for the background, but it looked too much. Uh, so I decided to just get rid of it, but I did entertain the idea. But I think that's it for the entirety of the piece. So you can see on the left side of my layers, I have a purple rectangle, which is basically my overlay layer on top of the, the chibis just to make them a little bit more uh, purpley overall for them to fit a little bit closer into the background a little bit more nicely. But I think that's pretty much it for the little chibi session for today. I definitely want to draw more chibis in the future though. It's definitely something I've missed doing and I think I'm gonna redo a lot of the chibis that I've done for Genshin and even maybe Honkai Star Rail, Ensemble Stars, any of the other fandoms that I'm in, I might redo them. But hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video and I'll leave you guys with the time lapse. Bye!